Okay, that should be working because... Yep, perfect. Thank you very much. <laughs> Don't beat the pico, man. Don't beat the pico. Are you ready to turn it up? Yeah, I'm pretty good. You know, I'm trying to start learning and trying to figure out the best platform mm -hmm. to download and all this kind of stuff. So, which one? And, um, you have, um, all the windows on the right side. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
how secure are you? Right. Exactly. And how much of a trade off between security and functionality is there? Because you can be so secure you can't function. Right, yeah. Efficiency is another thing to get into. You can secure yourself so much that you become uh, immobile, you can't do anything. Well, and then I'm the ignorant one that doesn't know anything about it. So y'all have to deal with that emotion of ignorance and denial. Denial, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and if there's money involved, it's a whole other thing. There's different levels, like we're talking about. It's not binary. So I think that kind of opens us up to uh, how everybody feels. Uh, this is how I felt, you know. I was living what I call my island life, right, my perfect world. It was just me, and I wasn't worried about anything. I had my Drupal site, and uh, then all of a sudden, the Drupal learning curve hit me, <laughs> uh, right? So uh, there were some crackers that uh, bulldozed me over, and then there's me falling down. And I was lucky enough to have the Drupal Dojo catch me, right? So uh, we have a. Yeah. <laughs> we can thank Brandon Williams for uh, spending the last five years hosting the Drupal Dojo, yeah. and that he was around when I needed him. So, thank you. <laughs> uh, here's my disclaimer. Right, every good presentation has to have a disclaimer. Uh, I'm not a security expert. I'm expressing my opinions. Uh, use this information at your own risk. Uh, I'm not making a guarantee as to the accuracy or completeness. Um, web security is something that's ever changing. And if you need some help, uh, there's companies like Acquia and Pantheon that you can go to. Uh, and in all likelihood, you're going to get hacked. So let's figure out how to mitigate the damages. Uh, before I jumped into security and different things about, you know, problems with it, I wanted to say I love Drupal, I love the community, everybody that I've met here is great. Uh, I feel that this group of people is very genuine. Uh, I've not felt like that a whole lot of other places. Uh, I believe that Drupal is modular, that the code base is very flexible, and that's awesome to me that I can just write a module and throw some code in, I don't have to rewrite everything in Drupal, right? I don't have to worry about user logins or anything like that. It's just built in. Uh, it's free and open source, and everybody loves free. And I'm going to come back to this over and over again, but Dresh is your friend. Uh, so Dresh up is something you want to remember. I wanted to give a special thanks to Capital Factory, uh, the Austin Drupal Dojo, and Brandon Williams in particular. Uh, the Austin, Texas Hackerspace. I got some help from those guys out there. Uh, open Office and all Drupal contributors. Today I'm going to talk about just four general categories. We're going to talk about Drupal Geddon, the mistakes that I made uh, before and after. And then we're going to talk about some industry standards that you can do to protect your site and some other tips that I came up with along my journey of security. So I wanted to get some more kind of a background on who I'm talking to to help me figure out what to say. Uh, so who here has made a Drupal site? Like at least one. Okay. And who's ever been cracked? We have a couple. Uh, how many recovered from that? Ooh. <laughs> okay, so we're all in the same boat. Yeah, uh, it's rough. Um, anybody use the command line? Okay, I think uh, I'll be giving some examples of that. I'm glad we have a pretty good base. Uh, who uses professional hosting, like Acquia, for their sites? Okay. Uh, anybody do shared hosting? Yep, got a couple. And anybody do your own hosting? Okay, great. So uh, I was doing my own hosting, and that's uh, going to be a big theme of this talk. So why did I pick on Drupal Geddon? Why is this one patch important uh, as opposed to all of the others that have come out? Uh, and then what about it, uh, or what was it? Right, we'll be diving into that. Who should care, and how did it work? So why talk about it? 
uh, one, it affected me, so I looked into it and I researched it. Uh, and I think it's one of the most interesting Drupal patches, uh, mainly because of the repercussions that it had, uh, or that it could have. Um, actually, Drupal has a pretty good history of security, so uh, events like this are pretty rare to happen, and most security patches are minor, uh, right? So the first security patches that I saw come through, it's like, oh, this is kind of a minor patch, no big deal, you know, don't really worry about it. So for months, I went on with that big red thing on my site that said, hey, you have a security update. Do you want to update it? I'm like, no, don't worry about that. You know, I'll do it later. Uh, not so good, right? <laughs> One of my mistakes. Uh, OK, and so Drupal Get in particular was a patch released to Drupal Core. And it was only one line. Uh, this was not a super complicated patch. But this one line had a vulnerability so bad that every Drupal site would be affected if it was not patched. Um, actually, most sites were patched, so most sites were unaffected. Uh, I was kind of the guy living off in his island world uh, that didn't really get the security messages, didn't get the updates. I wasn't involved in the community. Uh, you know, all of these things added up to my site ultimately having a create, read, update, and delete privileges for anonymous users on my database. Uh, they could do anything they wanted. Uh, so why should you care about Drupal Geddon? Chris, can you go back? What was that last bullet? I think you said the uh, first seven hours after the new release. Oh, yep. OK. So the first attacks uh, happened within seven hours after this patch. Th that's when they were first found in the wild. So it happened very quickly. And except for it took me months to find out I'd been hacked. So <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like I was monitoring it. Uh, other people were. And I'm glad that they were, because they didn't have to go through what I went through. Uh, but everybody should care about this, because crackers use everyone in their workflow. And let me explain something real quick. I'm saying crackers and not hackers, because there's a difference. Uh, the Austin, Texas hackerspace explained it to me. Uh, a hacker is generally someone who builds things, and a cracker is someone who breaks things or figures out how to exploit someone else's site without permission. Uh, so that's the definition of the words that I'll be using. Um, and just because you have a small site doesn't mean that you're immune. My site actually had one visitor almost all the time for the months that it was up, and that was just me because I didn't really tell anybody about my site. It was kind of like, hey, I'm going to throw my site up because I'm starting a tax practice. So let me have a website because everybody should have a website, right? OK. Um, but yeah, so pretty much it doesn't get smaller than that. And I was still a target when I got hacked. And, and you were using Drupal, obviously. I was obviously using Drupal. Yeah. I found this awesome thing called Drupal when I was in China. And so there I built a couple websites and had some fun with it, came back. Uh, it was Drupal 7, yeah. I, uh, I said, hey, you know, Drupal looks great. I played with it for like a year, came back to the US, said I need a site for my tax practice, set it up, let it run, and then didn't do security updates. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of the story, the background of how we got there. Um, I also looked through my logs uh, after I'd been hacked and found out I had a lot of like mydomain.com forward slash wp-login, which is the WordPress login, but I was running Drupal, so I had not been hacked until Drupal Geddon. So let's talk about how it worked, or at least one example of how it could work, I should say. Uh, the most common exploit that I came across uh, from different websites I'd come to was the user login form was what was used. And the form input for username uh, was altered. And uh, let, let me just keep running through the steps. That There was actually a process of many things that had to go wrong in order for this to actually happen. The, uh, the form input didn't have uh, necessarily like controls over it. And then the, the user login authenticate validate uh, is the function that creates the SQL statement. Uh, and then the SQL statement gets sent to Drupal prepared statements. Uh, 
right? So it's actually the database connection class in Drupal, uh, which calls expand arguments. And expand arguments was where the one line patch was. Uh, and the problem was that expand arguments expected an indexed array, which is a numerical array, right? So the keys should be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, et cetera, instead of you know, string and then value. And so when somebody came across this and said, hey, I can put a string here. Let's see what happens. Uh, well, this is what happens. And uh, in reality, this bug had been out there for a while. It had not been seen in the wild. Nobody really knew about it. A security firm was doing a review on Drupal site, came across it, and said, hey, we better report this to the Drupal security team, which manages all Drupal security uh, problems. And they handled it uh, in regards to, uh, they saw the exploit, they figured out how to fix it, and then there were announcements that came out. Uh, I just hadn't signed up for the mailing list, right? So uh, I'm going to talk about that later. I'll always sign up for the mailing list. Uh, but so this numerical versus associative array was the problem. It was a super easy fix, one line. Uh, this is the one line right here. So for each data as i was changed to for each array values uh, data. So it's it's removing the keys, right? So this variable, or uh, let's see. Yeah, this is an array that has keys in it when it's improper, and this removes the keys because that's not how it was designed, right? It was designed that it should be numerical indexed. And that was it. So that, that one line got me, and I actually do have a walkthrough if y'all are curious as to exact steps. Uh, what I've done is I've produced a visual example of how to do it, right? So real crackers would use scripts and they would have bots sent out to attack every single Drupal site they could find, right? So seven hours into it, bots were running. They were running alphabetically, hitting every Drupal site and looking for this. Uh, the sites actually, if they were found to be vulnerable, the crackers would hop in and then patch behind them so that nobody else could get in, so that basically it was their site and nobody else could get it. But uh, I'm actually not going to walk through this. Um, it's something you all can do on your own. I think it should take you about 30 minutes. Uh, I've gone like very detailed, like so if there's a command line argument you need to type, you know, you can type it. Uh, and it even walks you through setting up a Drupal site. So if you've never set up a Drupal site before, uh, this shows you how to do it. Uh, well, if we have time at the end, we can walk through it. Um, and let me, does somebody want to hand these out for me? I went ahead and printed this so y'all can take it home. Will you be posting a presentation on the Vito site maybe? Uh, yeah. All right, so let me go ahead and skip through this, and then uh, if you all want to and we have time at the end, we'll come back to it. Well, let's take a vote real quick. Who wants to walk through it? Let's go ahead and skip it, um, and then <laughs> there's about half and half. So. It's worth it. You may need it out of denial real fast. <laughs> yeah. Through me or where? Through you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I had her walk through it last night. Um, uh, it was it was interesting. I think it's worth it if y'all want to go through. Yeah. It's it's one of those things. The, it's almost something that you should do so you can experience it yourself and make sure you know how to type everything right, though. Like if you've never set up a site, it walks you through how to set up a site. Let's see, I think that was the last one. Let's see.
Okay, well, I'll walk through the slides uh, since it sounds like there is an interest in it. Okay, let's see. Okay. Um, I'll let you all do it at home, but I'll talk you through the steps. So the basic first step is to install Drupal 7.31. Uh, you have to install Drupal 7.31 and earlier because all of the versions after that have the patch included and you can no longer do this. So this is more of an educational type thing, you know, what actually happens to a site uh, when it gets cracked. Um, you're going to need Acquia Dev Desktop and a basic knowledge of Unix commands. Uh, and then so there's a couple commands right there you'll need to type. Um, so basically, go to the Acquia Dev Desktop home folder, download Drupal 7.31, uh, wait for just to finish, and make sure you're disconnected from the internet when you do this, right? Because you're going to have a Drupal site with uh, insecure uh, code. So if you're on a public Wi-Fi or anything, definitely disconnect. Um, Acquia Dev Desktop. You can click the plus button at the bottom left of your screen to import a local Drupal site. Uh, so this is what it's going to look like. That's the screen that pops up. You'll pick your Drupal 7.31 folder. Everything else will autofill. Uh, your local code, code base will, uh, let's see. Yeah, so the rest of it will autofill. I already said that. Um, you're going to open a web browser, navigate to your new Drupal website, run the install.php script, uh, or, all right, so I said, or whatever you named it. So if you didn't name it Drupal 7 31.dd, whatever you did name it, just navigate to forward slash install, and it'll run through a normal install. Uh, if you get a fatal error, like I did, uh, because cookies were not enabled, then here's how to fix it you basically drop all of your database tables and run through the install script again. Uh, or you can make sure cookies are enabled before you run the install script. <laughs> uh, let's see. And then this is where we actually get into the Drupal Geddon exploit. Uh, I was following a tutorial by Matt. Uh, anybody know how to say his last name? Karas, Karasstoff? Uh, and so there's his article if you want to go more in depth as to what I've shown you here. Uh, I, I gave you all very specific instructions. He goes more into what the hackers actually did to his site, right? He had like a, a whales apocalypse site or something that he was running. And that was his site that got hacked. And so he talks about it on his tutorial, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, it walked me through it and got me to the point where I'm at. Um, let's see. And then, so once you've opened your browser and gone to the Drupal Geddon site, you're going to go to the username input field. You're going to right click and inspect the element. And so you're going to see all of the HTML for your page. And you're actually going to go in there and you're going to edit it. So you need a web browser that's going to allow you to edit it. Uh, one thing I'm working on is. Uh, trying to figure out whether or not development tools is required. I have development tools enabled on my machine, uh, so I'm not sure if you have to have them or not. But if you're having problems, just go download the development tools for your browser. Uh, so copy the input field with edit name, which is basically your username field. And you're actually going to have two. So it's going to seem really strange logically that you should have two username fields to make this work. Uh, but you're creating an array for username, which is actually this exploit. So it's no longer a single value. You're turning it into an array uh, with keys, right? With an associative key, not a numerical key. And then from there, I tell you pretty much uh, what to enter. You're going to change the first input name to name equals, quote, name zero. And then you're going to insert your SQL. Uh, you can insert anything you want, right? Any SQL command that Drupal could normally run on the database, you can also now run as an anonymous user. Uh, I make a note here that you don't need actual login information. All you have to do 
is see the login field. Uh, and so I give you an example of an SQL that will work. Uh, basically, you're going to insert into the variables table uh, the name hacked and the value yes. That's how the variables table works. You can look into that later. Uh, so here I give you some screenshots if you don't like reading. Uh, so you can just go to your username field, right click, go to inspect element. Uh, here's what it's going to look like before you make all of your changes. And here's what it's going to look like after you make all the changes. Uh, and you duplicated that, right? Right, so as you can see here, the input field is uh, copied twice. So we're creating an array in the first input. Uh, and then the reason we need the second one is because since we referenced name zero in this array, we actually have to have a name zero. We're not using this for anything, but in order for it to not throw a PDO exception, it has to exist. Uh, so that's what we're doing here. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a note that this has to be at the same uh, like hierarchical level. Right, so if you just if you click on this and copy and paste, it's going to put it embedded within this input, but that's not where you want it. You have to click on your div class and then paste it from here so that they're at the same level. And uh, then at the very end, after everything looks like this, you're going to go back to your input fields. Right, so you're going to have a box here that says username. You're going to have another one underneath it and then you're going to have password, you can type anything in there. I typed hi, right? So I just typed hi, hi, and I think even for the password, I typed hi. And then I click login, and after that, let's see. So here I tell you, go ahead and change it. If you follow the pictures of what I told you to change it to, it'll get you there also. Um, here I told you, go ahead and type any value into it. It's, it doesn't matter what the value is, no real login information is necessary. And that's super scary, right? That you don't have to have valid login information for this to work. Uh, and then you click the login button and go back to Acquia Dev Desktop, click on your local database link, scroll down to the bottom, click on your variables table. And if you see hacked in your variables table, then you know that you were successful. And that's Drupal Geddon, right? So here I give you some more screenshots. That's what the variable table looks like. and if you see hacked in the values of your variable table, then that now proves that you can insert anything into the database uh, that you want. And the final and most important step, delete your Drupal get in sight. Do not leave it on your computer, right? This has not been patched. This exploit is still out here. And now anybody can do this. And they can type stuff other than hacked and yes on your site, right? So here I say delete it by opening Acquia Dev Desktop again. Click on your Drupal Gen site and click the minus button. Uh, from there, it will delete it. Uh, these are images, right? So click Drupal 731, click delete, and you should have a window pop up that looks like that. So that was my very quick run through. Uh, if y'all are interested, you can copy what I did. I wrote down the instructions for you. Uh, let's see. Did I not make this full screen? I guess I changed it and forgot to go back. Uh, so here's the mistakes that I made before I was cracked. Uh, this ultimately led to a total loss of my website. Uh, so I did not perform security updates. <laughs> Had I done this, that would have fixed everything. I also did not perform version control on my source code. So, okay, great, now I've been hacked. I can no longer trust my source code. Uh, I didn't make backups of my database. Uh, so, you know, I know they can run SQL on my database. Basically, everything now needs to be scrapped in my database. Hey, Chris? Yes. So, according to a previous slide, you said that uh, attacks were being made within seven hours of the public, public publication of this hack. So. Mm -hmm. It sounds like performing security updates in a timely manner uh, is important. Yes, um, I didn't do them at all. Well, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but yes, in a timely manner, uh, for sure. Thank you for bringing that up. You have 
uh, every Wednesday is when the security updates come out. So make sure you're following the mailing list every Wednesday and you're patching your site. Uh, well, but I think part of the point too okay. is you didn't have any customers and you didn't think it was doing anything that was out there being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So that's kind yeah. of my take home message is that even though you weren't using it for anything, you were just kind of playing around with it, it was actually a big security problem. Uh, that's correct. So I basically left a port open on my router to a machine that was running uh, to a machine that was running compromised code. Uh, and ultimately, I mean, I honestly didn't put that much work into my site. I think I probably put eight hours of work into it. So it was not like a terrible loss. But, you know, just knowing that you've been hacked is not a good feeling. Uh, so it bothered me, obviously, to the point where I got to this talk. I wanted to figure out about it and share it with y'all. Chris, did they do anything to your site once they? Yes, and gonna I'm going to talk about that. Oh, okay. uh, it's about three or four slides oh. from now. Oh my. Um, yeah, also not on here, but should be on here. Uh, can you write down on this slide? Uh, do you have a pen? Okay. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll go back later. But my, uh, my files directory. Uh, is not on here, but that's also something that I did not have a backup of. Uh, so I still wonder as to what my exact permissions on that directory were before all of this happened. Uh, I'll get into it later, but something interesting happened in my files directory, uh, so it really should have been on here. Uh, let's see. I also didn't see a true my site, uh, so once they got into my site, and they had access to my site for months because Drupal Geddon happened months before I actually found that I'd been compromised. So uh, who knows what they did. Uh, I didn't monitor my site. Uh, actually, monitoring my site was how I found out I had been hacked. I finally decided one day, you know what? I have allowed anonymous users to submit a request to join my site. Uh, but I required administrator approval. Well, I'm tired of these hundreds of spam accounts that have been created, so let me start deleting them. So as I'm deleting these hundreds of spam accounts that have been created, I come to one that says administrator. Oh, God. <laughs> so I have user UXQIP something uh, with administrator access. What's my first thought? Delete. <laughs> uh, one of my mistakes made. I did not make a forensics backup of my site. Uh, I immediately started saying, oh god, I've been hacked and deleting like all of their access. Uh, so, oops. Uh, but so monitoring my site was what actually found it, but I was not doing timely monitoring of my site. Uh, so mistakes I made after I was cracked, I didn't make a forensics backup. Um, I talked about the spam accounts. And the first thing you should do is make a backup, right? As you're going through it. Let me make a backup so I just, I know exactly what happened later. And then I can start deleting everything so I know that they don't have access to it. Uh, let's see. I actually never got my site back up and running. To this day, it's still not running. Uh, my web server is also not running. And I basically just panicked and unplugged the computer because of what I'm about to tell you, right? So I did do a little bit of analysis, you know, how much access did they get, what actually happened. Uh, it all started with this administrator account. Okay, I have an administrator that's not me on my website. What happened? Uh, well, let me go check my files directory. Oh, look, there's PHP code in my files directory. Oh, look, my .ht access is blank. Why is there nothing in my .ht access file, my public files directory should have something in it uh, like that blocks PHP code. Uh, so th this stuff is bad. Um, and then I see my database is in my files directory, but I didn't put it there. So somebody's now downloaded my database. So my database is now existing somewhere out on the internet. Well, also in here, I get a call from Time Warner Cable. Hey, congrats. Actually, no, no, no. I did not get a call. 
uh, what happened was I was traveling and I was trying to connect back to my home server. I couldn't get access. I'm like, okay, my VPN went down. I have to go back home and turn it back on. Uh, nope, I go back home, try to fix my VPN. Still don't have internet access. Okay, let's call Time Warner Cable. Uh, uh, nope, sorry. You're gonna have to call our abuse team or something. Uh, you've been shut down, right? Okay, so I have to wait until hours between eight and five because that's when they work. And then I call them back and I say, hey, what's going on? Well, we found out that your network was trying to connect to a command and control center. Uh, so we shut you down. Most likely it's a PC on your network and you just need to run some virus stuff. Okay, well, Time Warner cab Cable gives me this virus stuff. I go to my PC on my network and I start running all this stuff. My server was actually on a Mac. So my PC was not infected at all. Uh, I tell them, okay, I've run all this stuff, activate my internet again, they turn it back on. Uh, I don't exactly know the order of events. I'm kind of guessing what happened here. But at some point I notice that my server has 333,000 spam emails trying to go out. Uh, so I was connected to a bot network on my server that was trying to send out spam. Okay, well, that's not too bad because Time Warner Cable blocks everything and it was stuck in the queue, right? So that's one good thing. Um, I think I forgot to mention my funny part. They got my database, but the only thing they got was that they need to pay their taxes on certain days in the year because that's the only thing I was using my website for. So congratulations, they now know they need to pay their taxes. On all the money they stole from hacking other people. Yeah. <laughs> It's income. <laughs> I don't know. It's a good question. <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't know. That is a good question. I'm slightly curious now. It's, it's their profession, right? We'll, we'll send that message to the IRS and see what they say. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Your other income. Uh, let's see here. So I never actually got an email or a phone call from Time Warner Cable. I thought that would have been nice. Uh, and then I was looking through my system log, and I saw something that appeared to be my uh, Drupal user running things that Root should be running. And then I just said, okay, I'm going to unplug you. Uh, he, you're done. <laughs> so my server has been unplugged for the last few months. Uh, eventually, I'm going to figure out how to safely diagnose what happened. But uh, that's going to take some time. So I feel that I learned these guys have way too much time. Uh, even to come up with this, right? Like, who even thinks about creating two username fields? Like that, that seems to me like a, a different conceptual level of thought than what most people think about, right? It's just who even comes up with that? But anyway, I don't know. Uh, so we should prepare ourselves for the next Drupal Geddon, right? Uh, we're not perfectly secure. This is not a perfectly secure world, but we can do things to mitigate the damages so that we don't have to scrap our site and start, start over. Uh, don't pretend you're on an island by yourself. Uh, oops. And one command would have saved me, dress up. Creating a cron job with dress up would have made sure that my site was always getting those patches. And you can even append security updates only to dress. So if you want to make sure your site's up to date, just run a cron job with dress and you don't have to worry about it, right? You can feel safer at the end of the day because you know you have the Drupal security team watching your back and every time stuff like this comes out they're patching it and you're getting the update. Uh, so I would 
recommend that I think that a broken site, right? So let's say there is a patch and it breaks your site. A broken site is better than a compromised site. That's my personal opinion. Uh, and then I thought it was amazing how it was just two words that could have fixed this. Uh, this is what I'm calling the industry standards, the Drupal security review module, right? That's a great module to use. Uh, I did not know about it for a long time. I actually installed it on some of my sites and found out some of my default settings were not proper. And this is actually not a module meant for protecting sites. It's a module meant for evaluating whether a host gives their customers secure default installations. Uh, but it also works on your own site. So if a hosting provider has to pass it, I personally think it should be good for me too. Uh, and then that's my industry standards. Uh, basically, get some help from the industry, from the community. Uh, I'm just getting plugged into this, so I think that's right. Anybody else agree? Or are there, yeah? Okay. So speaking of which, when you ran that, your host site was not secure. Uh, yeah, so HostGator, done pass. Their default installation is not up to par. Uh, but obviously, places like Aquia and Pantheon, and anybody you actively see advertised on Drupal.org, if they're on Drupal.org, they're passing this. Uh, so you can feel better about that. Tell them what HostGator did. Uh, well, so I, I chatted with the guy at HostGator. And I said, hey, uh, you know, I ran this module and all hosting providers are supposed to pass it, but I'm noticing that the permissions that y'all are setting don't pass this. Uh, you know, can, can we look into this? And he said, sure, let me just run our permission script again. So he ran the permission script again and it still didn't pass. And I showed it to him. He said, okay, well, I'll send it up to our administrators and they'll look into it. Uh, it's been a few months and I haven't heard back. What was the whole Apache thing? Oh, well, the reason it wasn't patching is because Apache was running as your user, right? So if you imagine that your user is normally the owner of a file and Apache should be the group, uh, Apache was actually the owner of the file. So you can get it to pass this if you remove write access for the owner, but that's not generally what people do. Generally, the owner should be able to write to the files. Can you say it can change the HD access, HD access file? Um, well, that's so something about Apache. That's something different. Um, and if you run the security review module, it should tell you uh, files that are writable. Um, but yeah. Didn't the default set HD access and Drupal writable? That's even after the security thing. No, um, but it, I mean, it shouldn't be writable by the PH, the user that's running the PHP. Right? Because that's like, that defeats the purpose of having the permission. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, if you can, because at that point you can essentially just write your own. Should only be readable by Apache. You should not be writable by Apache. Or whoever is running the PHP, like whoever the PHP process is running by. So .ht access files are something I will briefly mention as I've asked about it a little bit. Uh, .ht access is not actually something that's managed by core. So I asked somebody on the Drupal security team, meaning it's not actually managed by the Drupal security team. It is the responsibility of each site owner to make sure that that HT access is, it has the right permissions and it has all of the right stuff in it. Uh, so I recommend using the security review module. Um, Did the uh, security module point out the, uh, it, the issue with your .ht access file? Did it see that? That would be an interesting experiment. It would be. Um, so, I've uh, often wondered. Yeah, I keep reading about uh, putting the private files outside of .root, and 
I, I see that from time to time, and I've never done that. And, um, can anybody talk that about the, is it okay to put it within, under the default files structure? Because I think that's the default where it goes, right? But then they tell you, no, move it out outside the boundary. I think if you have Drupal set up your private files for you, then it is within your web root. Uh, but obviously it's more secure to put it outside of your web root because you can navigate to your private files if you know the URL, or I guess the URI. Uh, so, you're, did I answer your question? Yeah, okay. I did when you could. I didn't when you the, yeah, the um, security thing for private files is when you have a private file, you want to check that the current user is authenticated to view the file. The only way you can do that is to have Drupal authenticate the user and then have Drupal deliver the file. So if your files are in your web root, then you can just type in the URL to the file and bypass Drupal. So then you're bypassing that private file authentication. If you put it outside of the web root, Drupal can read files outside of the web root, but you can't type in a URL to get access to it. So Drupal will authenticate you, it will read the file, and then basically proxy it to you. And so now it's served through Drupal. Okay, thank you. And, and you, you can have it in, in the web root, but you have to make sure that the that folder is treated differently. All right, so it's, it's more complicated, but it's possible, All right? And I'm not entirely sure. I, I think you would have to modify a .ht access file yes. or yeah. your actual Apache, Apache configuration. Yeah. About a year ago, there, there was a, Drupal would complain about the HD access file or the, the private file system. If, if you didn't have it set, they want the, Yeah, and it should complain always by, about, even about the, uh, the public file system. Because there's a .ht access file that needs to be added to that for it to, for you to be able to not, for it to stop um, uh, the HD access Drupal from being dropped there. Well, my question is that, the, what they'll complain about makes you do with the HT access file for the private file. Does that stop what Brandon's talking about, where you can put in the URL so you know what exactly what it is? I don't know exactly, but it, yeah. you, you should try it. Okay. All right. You answered my question. Yeah. Get it out of the doc root. Yes. Or make sure that that folder is does not accessible outside of yeah. Okay. Yeah. Being yeah. served by. If it's in your your doc root of your of your website, there's really nothing you can do that to prevent somebody from just typing in a URL. Okay. okay. So I think that answers that question. Uh, that it, that was a good question. Uh, the private file system is uh, different than the public file system, and it should reside outside of your web root, ideally. Uh, I guess it depends on what you're trying to protect, right? How secure do you want it to be? Uh, so my tips uh, that I found after going through this process, number one, involve yourself in the community, right? This is a great community. That's, I mean, what we just did is a perfect example of helping each other. That's why you want to get involved. Uh, tip number two, build your defense in layers. Don't rely on just one thing to protect your site. Uh, I'll go more in depth into that. Um, have a development workflow, uh, set the right permissions, protect your code, protect your database, test your backups, and make sure you dress up at a minimum every Wednesday. Uh, so step number one, when I say involve yourself in the community, what I actually mean uh, first is sign yourself up for the security mailing list. I tell you how to do that here if you haven't already. Go to drupal.org and edit your profile to sign up for the uh, security announcements newsletter. Attend the local events and join the IRC. Uh, I actually found the Austin Drupal Dojo through IRC. Uh, I'm glad that we had an IRC channel uh, because I think it was when I logged into the IRC, I saw we meet every Thursday and I was like, awesome, I'm going. <laughs> it's uh, hashtag Drupal-Austin. I would be super happy if everybody joined the IRC channel and started chatting in that. Uh, for the most part, uh, not too many people are active in that channel, 
but that would be super cool if we could get an Austin Drupal channel pretty active. Or we could just go meet and talk like this. But. Well, but it's an augmentation of the meeting and talking mm -hmm. like this because you can't always be here and it's once a week or whatever. So in that downtime, then it might actually stimulate and just be discussion in person. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, so definitely get involved. Uh, then make sure you have defense and layers. Right here, I'm going to go ahead and recommend do not host a production site at home. Uh, okay, you're just opening a hole into your private network that you don't want there. You don't want to have to worry about your home, all of your computers getting compromised. Uh, so I'll talk more about that in regards to your proper workflow, but it's just separating it, getting that production off of your home network. Uh, but you should have a secure home network. So make sure that your router is your first line of defense shut down all your ports, change your default username and password, uh, don't use DMZs. It seems like a great idea, but it's actually not. Uh, demilitarized zones basically just say, hey, this computer, I'm going to open all the ports on it so that you don't have any problems, uh, mainly when you're trying to play the game that you want to play or your screen sharing or webcasting or whatever you're doing. I'm having some problems, so I'm going to throw it in a DMZ. Well, now every single port has been opened to that computer. It's not a good idea. And then keep your firmware up to date. Uh, I mean, keeping up to date is like the number one thing you can do for security. There's tons of people out there working to keep you secure. And if you don't keep up to date, the vulnerabilities are most likely out there and known in the wild. Before you get off the router thing, I think Brandon was one that brought it up, but the default manufacturer's firmware was more vulnerable than the third party firmware, which yeah. is weird. <laughs> Come out with hacks against the router itself, and so you, you know, usually when that happens, it makes news not just like nerd news but regular news. Uh, and so you'll usually hear about it, but that's part of keeping your firmware up to date. Uh, and then also, a lot of routers have like remote management, so you can log into the router from outside of your home network. You definitely want to turn that off because they usually don't have um, brute force protections. So you know, normally you log in five times and you're locked out. Well, most remote management doesn't have that at all. So if you have remote management on, then anybody can just brute force your router until they get your admin login. Just turn it off if you don't need it. That was yeah, it. Anybody who's ever like, logged in through a from remote building, I mean, it's, it's the most insane thing. Yeah. So it should always just be, and, and the, the, what's so, Well, I don't have it enabled, but it's all I have. Yeah. Yeah. Make it easier? I, I, I don't know. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> Probably people like me that think they live on an island and uh, <laughs> not too worried about the rest of the world. <laughs> well, that's the thing is that you shouldn't, I mean, I don't want to worry about that. Like, I, I don't, I, I don't really not want my apartment to be secure, but it kind of has to be. Like, everybody has to go through and, like, Yeah. <laughs> you had mentioned this to me that if you're on the mailing list, if you're not on the mailing list, the crackers are on the mailing list. So when a security flaw comes out, they know about it immediately. And so if you're not patching your site, they've just been told, here's the security flaw, and here's where it is, and here's how it is. I guess I didn't mention it, but uh, one of the things I found, I mean, who really knows where the crackers originated, but when I looked through my Drupal Watchdog logs, I saw that the IP addresses were bouncing all over like Europe and Asia and Australia and stuff like that. So uh, that was kind of interesting. But what I wanted to say is this Drupal Geddon uh, security flaw was so well announced that uh, in my personal opinion, I'm pretty sure the organizations of crackers that are out there called everybody in and said, hey, Drupal's having a major security update. Everybody's coming into work, and <laughs> we're going to figure out what's going on, and we're going to get to it first. And 
I mean, that's the only way that they could do it in seven hours. Right. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's also the, it, the, you look at it in like more of the sense of like that there is a very small group of people who have uh, a lot of infrastructure set up to be able to, to do a lot of damage to it. And that's like, that's, that's really the, the big danger for some of these, like what's listed in those kinds of things, is that they've already got lists of all like, And so there's also, you know, just like we love open source because one person can fix something and everybody gets the fix, crackers also love open source. And all the tools they use for detecting and finding and all that kind of stuff is also open source. So only one person has to write a crack for the Drupal Geddon thing, and they give that to the cracker community. And now anybody can run that. So. And it's easier to buy Well, if somebody bought mine, they're now minus one. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. Uh, so, your router is definitely your first line of defense. Obviously, it's important. Everyone here decided to throw some input, meaning it's that important. Uh, after that, uh, look at your Apache configuration files. Uh, make them as restrictive as possible. Uh, go into your .ht access for your Drupal and hit deny from all and allow from whatever your trusted IP address network is uh, if you can do that, if it's not a production website, right? So if you're just doing your local development on your laptop, go ahead and shut it down from everything else but localhost. Uh, why would you want to open it up? You don't need to. Uh, your staging environment maybe is hosted somewhere else. Uh, mine is on the same one as my production. So I put my home network as the trusted IP address. Uh, and then that's, that's as restrictive as I can be at that point. Um, so anybody have any inputs on Apache and configuration files? Make sure they're there. Sometimes when you copy a Drupal site, it does not copy hidden files. Uh, that's a common problem I've had when I'm migrating sites. If you just hit copy your Drupal site from one location to another, uh, hidden files don't always come with it. So uh, your .ht access file does not always get carried over. Most of the time, you'll end up with a problem uh, that the rewrite module is not turned on, and so your site just actually won't work. And so that's your indication that the .ht access files didn't come across. Uh, but an another one that doesn't come across is your git ignore. Uh, let's see. So at the application level, security review. It's pretty much my uh, my go-to right now. So uh, install it on all your sites and check it, and use Dresh up. When you say uninstall it, do you mean actually remove, um, uninstall and remove the directory, the, the module directory, or just? Uh, right. So yeah, I guess that's what I put here. Um, on your production site, install the security review module, uh, test it to see if it's secure, and then go ahead and remove it because that's just another potential security hole that you're giving people more information than maybe they need. Like if they did compromise your site in one way, you don't want to have the security review module installed so that they can see all the other ways that it's also insecure. You're just saying turn it off? Turn it off or actually delete the uh, I mean, I would probably just I know they remove that. it from your site. They say that, but I don't understand what they mean. I, I think that that's what I also read is like remove it from your production website. Uh, and that's just, you know, it's being extra protective, making sure that if you do have one way in that you don't tell them everything else easily. So then every time you want to run it again, you reinstall it? 
Uh, so on your production website, if you changed something, you would want to rerun it. So you know, you just upload it, test it, delete it. Is it good enough if you do it on your development website? Uh, no, you need to do it on your production because your permissions could be different. Right. So uh, I think somewhere in here, I'm going to put a link to a permission script for anybody that doesn't really know anything about permissions. You can, if you know about the command line, you can get this script and type in exactly what it says. It gives you instructions, you know, on how to use it. Uh, so it basically says type, you know, forward slash script, put in your parameters, and it'll secure your site. If you run security review after it, and it doesn't give you any writable access, then you're good to go, uh, at least according to security review. Let's see. Anybody want to talk about development workflows? I know most people in here probably know about it. I've been talking for a while. Let's see. Brandon, I'm going to volunteer you. Um, Just what, why would you uh, want to have a development staging and production site? that website extremely vulnerable to um, uh, uh, changes to the code. But if you have it in Git, it, it's very, it becomes just one command, like you know, git status, to see if any files have changed um, you know, outside of the, the file script. So that's like the, the, the basic reason. The, the other ones are for the, if, if, if you, you can, um, if, if you uh, can be confident in replacing it may not with it even with a Drupal site it isn't a guarantee that that will be safe um, that's one of the funny things about you know, having a website especially with uh, you know, one of the reasons why you want to make sure that you uh, PHP filters off and like if you if, if your site was if your production site was was compromised you um, obviously want to replace the reason it got compromised but then you can in the code base, but then the database could potentially run PHP code from stuff only stored in the database. So it becomes a little bit, it's not its not quite as black and white as what, like what you stated, but the, it, it, it does help you in that regard, and you are, you can then actually, you can very easily uncover what happened, um, which is one of the bigger problems, it's a, it's a bigger problem with WordPress sites because WordPress is much easier to Something that will tell you if the source code files have changed or not. So, uh, my, my general understanding on it was if you separate your development, staging, and production, then what you're going to end up with is three copies of your site. Uh, so, let's say, worst case scenario, you decide your production site is completely compromised, including your database. Well, you have a backup. Hopefully, if you're doing this every day, you have a backup from yesterday. So you decide that your database has now PHP script in it. Uh, you might lose one day's worth of user comments and things like that. But uh, so Michael, is that correct? Then if you if you literally 
like deleted your production server. You deleted the code, you deleted the database, uh, you deleted the files, <coughs> and you uploaded it again from your uh, laptop, right? Which it was off the network. It, and it was secure because you know exactly when you were compromised, then you should be restoring to a state that was uncompromised. Uh, uncompromised, but still vulnerable. But still vulnerable, right? right. So you have to figure out what you happened. You have to delete your production site, restore from a backup, patch, mm -hmm. and then you can upload that to production. Yep. But Almost. is Almost. there something we're missing? Because, like, right. So like that is, you know, like uh, if you are really worried, the only thing you can do is burn the building down. Like completely. <laughs> like, uh, it's just like destroy the server. Um, because... Because if, if a site gets compromised, it, it's actually possible to compromise the server from that point, yes. which I think you experienced. Yes. Uh, and even, yeah, sorry. When you say server, do you actually mean the machine or do you mean the hard drive or both? Uh, I was going as far as OS, but with some of the scary stuff that people have done with like um, with the Apple BIOS, like just like if you are genuinely worried about security, like just throw it in the trash. Okay. <laughs> like, I mean, that, like, that, that is. Uh, like and that's only if you're, I don't know, worried about more than just your own. I mean, like that's a very high bar. Yeah. Uh, like other people's medical information would be the bar, which like throw it in the trash. Would, yeah. Would be my advice. Okay. But like when we're talking kind of like theoretically and like whatever, um, once you're like you're, if PHP is compromised, then potentially the server is compromised, and at that point. Even potentially the buy like the like the hardware is compromised. That's really often you know in 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 uh, in uh, uh, kind of like tinfoil hat land, but it's like definitely physically and like within reason possible. How's that um, happen? It has happened. You said that. Yeah. yeah, like there was a there's a really weird exploit actually on Max where um, uh, essentially they can sort of flash the BIOS, the, the boot stuff, yep. um, and it'll, uh, uh, and it's completely, it's, I think it's still essentially impossible to get rid of that. And so they, so, yeah, even if you took your hard drive out of your computer, and you bought a brand new one, and you put it in, will they have had the, the flash memory, the BIOS on your motherboard? So you put a brand new computer in, you reinstall OS right. 10, you're still compromised, because it's your actual, it's one level below that. But you can still reflash your BIOS, I mean, you're not, well, put a new firmware there, you're good to go. Yeah, it's, it's not on Apple. It's not BIOS if it's on Apple's boot with EFI. But there's EFI on your video yeah, cards sorry. also. So you could actually right. affect your video card and get a new machine and then have the EFI on your video card clash and put yeah. your video card back in <laughs> the other machine. Well, I think right. you know, they, they do that for the master boot record on your hard drive. You can affect that. So, yeah, and, and, for, and the USB, what's the USB one? Yeah. Um, I don't know the name. They, they, uh, you know, they hack the firmware on your USB. So if you need computer, you plug it into it. Looks like a regular USB, but it actually it's got the virus on it. By the way, um, I, I was watching a security video of this guy who was a you know, kind of professional cracker, and he said that they would pass out USB sticks at these conferences they go to for free. You know, and everybody yeah. pick one up when they go home and plug in their machine. Now they got everybody's machine. <laughs> Yeah. And even even if it even if it's a legitimate person giving them out, you go grab them out, show them, put the software on, throw them back out on the table. Right. You know. So. Interesting. Yeah, and I mean, and when it comes down to it, like the, the the biggest sort of like, well, oh my God, like, well, what do I do if that happens, or like, how do I protect myself from that? And that's where the defense in depth sort of like philosophy kind of comes in. It's and and and, and sort of and, and also monitoring. Custodian of critical information, then monitoring the access to that information is one of the most important things you can do um, to, to ensure its security. Because, like, kind of what I don't know, the place where my head goes when I think about this stuff is like nothing's actually secure. We can just make it. Uh, it's it's sort of you can only make a make it so that somebody has to spend either a great deal of effort or a great deal of time to 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 or, gain or money or, or money. Yeah. Right. Um, Target has. Exactly. So, right. 
right? So like building a vault around your house is probably a waste of money because nobody really cares, right? Nobody's gonna like, like but probably getting like a security system or putting, like is maybe a good idea, but putting the sticker on your window is, is a great idea. Okay. <laughs> uh, because like, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, people that are trying to rob your house are gonna you know, see like, oh, well, maybe, maybe this person has security, I'll just go to the next house that definitely doesn't. Well, that's what the case says. I just look at the one that doesn't have a dog, doesn't have a sticker. Yep. Easy, easy target. Yeah, and that's where you know a lot of these like these exploits kind of come in, and why they you know, can, can happen so quickly uh, is that they automate that process essentially. <laughs> well, I was asking this question also that if if you can tell from the internet what version of Drupal you're running uh, on the site, so that uh, you know, somebody trying to hack your site. Go out there and see. Oh, yeah, that's a vulnerable version. Is that an easy thing to do? So, real quick, um, I'm seeing we're a little low on time. Do you know if the live feed cuts off exactly at nine? I do not know. Okay, uh, let me blow through this yeah. real quick. Uh, so, development workflows super important. Uh, obviously, there's potential ways around that uh, in regards to your production site can become very compromised. Uh, but I mean, this will help. Uh, you can. Even if you trash the server, you at least have a copy of your data. So if you get a new server, you can put the data on it. Uh, continuing, uh, my workflow involves uh, keeping my development site on my local machine. Uh, and then I keep my local database backups there so that I have my backups off my production server. right? Because if your backups on your production server and it becomes compromised, well, now your backups are probably compromised too. Um, don't let your production server know about your home server. Uh, I mean, if you put ways to connect to your home server, like FTP or something automatically, uh, you're probably just asking for trouble. Uh, set the right permissions. Here's a link that you can go to uh, to download this script I was talking about. Uh, it's from Drupal.org, and it should be pretty good to go to pass the security review module. Um, there's another guide for how to administer a Drupal site. Protect your, go your code with Git. Uh, Git's a great tool. It's for versioning, and you'll know if somebody changed your code. Use the backup and migrate module for backing up your uh, database. Uh, Y'all can talk about this later as to whether or not this is the right way to do it. But uh, I was thinking a secure way to do it would be use the backup and migrate module to create a local copy at some time uh, of day, and then later run a cron job that downloads it and then deletes it using SSH with private keys. Uh, you don't want to send your database unencrypted over email or FTP. Uh, that's just asking for trouble again. Uh, test your backups so that you know whether or not they work. Because if you wait until you've actually been compromised, you might find out you forgot to back up your files directory, or your backups weren't running as often as you thought they were, or it doesn't work at all. Uh, something unexpected happens, and maybe you have an incredibly long amount of downtime. Uh, you don't want that to happen to you. So always dress up. Uh, two simple words can keep you from having to go through all this. Uh, thank you very much. Well done. Four seconds to go. <laughs> okay. Is there any danger with dress up? Um, yeah, you can break your site. Uh, it'll break your site, but it won't necessarily, like, you won't be able to get compromised from that patch because you now have the patch on your site. The trade off is breaking your site versus securing your site. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you, you know, security updates come out every Wednesday. So if you want, you can test your security upgrades on your development machine. And if everything works fine, then you just dress up.